Hey everyone, hope you're having a great day. You're listening to the RX Daily Dose. Today's episode is being recorded for Monday, August 22nd, and I'm your host, Ian Parnagoni. We update this podcast for healthcare providers, medical professionals, and anyone who has an interest in drug updates. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe on all your favorite podcast platforms and social media, including iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, and Instagram. All links can be found in the show notes below. So in today's episode, we have just two updates from the FDA, first issuing a final ruling related to OTC hearing aids and approval of Zinteglo for a specific type of beta thalassemia. As always, feel free to skip around. I'm going to include times in the show notes so you get the updates that interest you. First up this week, the FDA issued a final rule to improve access to hearing aids, which may in turn lower costs for millions of Americans. This action establishes a new category of over-the-counter hearing aids, enabling consumers with perceived mild to moderate hearing impairment to purchase hearing aids directly from stores or online retailers without the need for a medical exam, prescription, or a fitting adjustment by an audiologist. Close to 30 million adults in the U.S. could benefit from hearing aid use. Individuals with permanent hearing impairment can use hearing aids to help make speech and sounds louder, improving the ability to communicate effectively with others. Many hearing aids can be expensive, and this final rule aims to stimulate competition and facilitate the sale of safe and effective OTC hearing aids in traditional retail stores or online nationwide. The OTC category established in this final rule applies to certain air conduction hearing aids intended for people 18 years of age and older who have perceived mild to moderate hearing impairment. Hearing aids that do not meet the requirements for the OTC category, for example because they are intended for severe hearing impairment or users younger than 18, are still prescription devices. The FDA finalized the rule after receiving and reviewing more than a thousand public comments on the proposed rule, which was issued on October 20th, 2021. In response to public comments and to assure the safety and effectiveness of OTC hearing aids, the final rule incorporates several changes from the proposed rule, including lowering the maximum sound output to reduce the risk of hearing loss from over-amplification of sound, revising the insertion depth limit in the ear canal, requiring that all OTC hearing aids have a user-adjustable volume control, and simplifying the phrasing throughout the required device labeling to ensure it is easily understood. The final rule also includes performance specifications and device design requirements specific to OTC hearing aids. The final rule also amends existing rules that apply to prescription hearing aids for consistency with the new OTC category. It repeals the conditions for sale for hearing aids, and it includes provisions that address some of the effects of the FDA OTC hearing aid regulations on state regulations of hearing aids. The effective date of the final rule is 60 days following publication in the Federal Register. Manufacturers of hearing aids sold prior to the effective date of the final rule will have 240 days after its publication to comply with the new or revised requirements. For hearing aids that have not been offered for sale prior to the effective date, compliance with the new or revised requirements must be achieved before marketing the device, including obtaining 510K clearance if applicable. The FDA also this week approved Betty Beglagene Auto Tem Cell, which goes by brand name Zinteglo, the first cell-based gene therapy for the treatment of adults and pediatric patients with beta thalassemia who require regular blood transfusions. Beta thalassemia is a type of inherited blood disorder that causes a reduction of normal hemoglobin and red blood cells in the blood. Through mutations in the beta-globin subunit, 
which leads to insufficient delivery of oxygen in the body. The reduced levels of red blood cells can lead to a number of health issues, including dizziness, weakness, fatigue, bone abnormalities, and more serious complications. Transfusion-dependent beta thalassemia, the most severe form of the condition, generally requires lifelong red blood cell transfusions as the standard course of treatment. These regular transfusions can be associated with multiple health complications of their own, including problems in the heart, liver, and other organs due to an excessive buildup of iron in the body. Zinteglo is a one-time gene therapy product administered as a single dose. Each dose of Zinteglo is a customized treatment created using the patient's own bone marrow stem cells that are genetically modified to produce functional beta-globin, which is a hemoglobin component. The safety and effectiveness of Zinteglo were established in two multicenter clinical studies that included adult and pediatric patients with beta thalassemia. Effectiveness was established based on achievement of transfusion independence, which is attained when the patient maintains a predetermined level of hemoglobin without needing any red blood cell transfusions for at least 12 months. Of 41 patients receiving Zinteglo, 89% achieve transfusion independence. The most common adverse reactions associated with Zinteglo included reduced platelet and other blood cell levels, as well as mucositis, febrile neutropenia, vomiting, fever, alopecia, nosebleed, abdominal pain, cough, headache, rash, nausea, pigmentation disorder, and pruritus. There is a potential risk of blood cancer associated with this treatment. However, no cases have been seen in studies of Zinteglo. Patients who receive Zinteglo should have their blood monitored for at least 15 years for any evidence of cancer. Patients should also be monitored for hypersensitivity reactions during Zinteglo administration and should be monitored for thrombocytopenia and bleeding. This application was granted a rare pediatric disease voucher in addition to receiving priority review, fast track, breakthrough therapy, and orphan drug designation. The FDA granted approval of Zinteglo to Bluebird Bio Incorporated. And that's all I have for right now. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I'll include all links in the show notes below, so please go back and check those out too. Please connect with me on any of your social media platforms and give me feedback on what you heard today. I'd love to know what you thought about the episode. And as always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe wherever you listen to your podcasts. And thank you so much for tuning in. Stay safe out there, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.